Okay, my next guest is someone that even I think is unusual, and it's because she brings some unusual knowledge, something that you don't always find on television and that you will only see for the first time in Sunrise, but hopefully not the last. I'm talking about traditional ways to cook, store, preserve, and serve healthy food. Aisha is a vegan chef. And she's got a lot of traditional uh, utensils and she's got a lot of information on healthy ways to cook and to serve and to preserve food. And I can see quite a few here in front of me and they look absolutely beautiful. I think that you should have participated in that uh, entrepreneurial competition, but maybe next year you'll get the chance to do so. Aisha, good morning and welcome to Sunrise. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm fascinated. Okay, I know what this is for. This is for eating, right? This, this is yes. like a nice spoon made out of a baby calabash. Yes. But uh, why do you think this is better than an aluminium or a metal spoon, for example? Well, now, let's say people talk about organic. Organic? Yes, this is something organic. It is um, natural. It doesn't rust. It doesn't stain. Yeah. And it must be very good for eating hot food. You can use it to eat anything. You can eat your hot cocoa with this. You can take your hot soup with it. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Tell me a little bit about this uh, big one in front of you. Well, this is uh, a preserver, a cooler, and uh, a warmer. It looks like a decorated calabash to me. Uh, how, how does it preserve, cool, and warm yeah, without well, electricity? Without electricity. That's what people <laughs> don't know about calabashes. Calabash is something that if you serve anything hot in it, it stays hot for long. And if you Are put you anything sure? cold in it, yes. This, this is a smaller version of this. This is a smaller version, It's yeah. got nothing in it. It's, it's just, just, you know, two pieces of Yes, and, of and that is it. That, that is, is it. it. Yes. This and is if our I put something cold in it, it will stay cold. It will stay cold. For if you long? put your ice cubes ice in cubes. it. Ice cubes. Yeah, and cover it well. It can stay the whole day. Really? Yes. And how long will yeah, it keep things hot? Like It's like a flask, like a thermos exactly. flask. Exactly. Up north, we eat our tea set in the calabashes and people do not understand if you serve hot color uh, hot tz in a calabash if even you leave it open it stay hot until you finish eating i had no idea that calabash had these sort of uh, you know thermodynamic properties exactly. heat properties yeah so it it holds the temperature of whatever you put in it yes what about the well, what about the holding it in terms of preserving it? How good is it? Because it's organic, so maybe I would think that bacteria and so on and so forth, you know, would grow much more readily in this than in something made out of plastic or glass or ceramic or steel. Yeah. For instance, shea butter. If you put a shea, if you put your shea butter in a calabash, it stays for years. The quality, the texture, the color stays the same. What's so but special about it, the calabash? Well, I mean, well, it's a natural thing, and uh, I don't know how to put it, but it is created to help preserve. And I have calabashes that my grandma used, and they they. They are about 100 years old or more. Okay. Tell me about this flower pot. What do you use that for? This is a cooking pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to yes, cook some fun. It looks that, like a flower pot to yes, me, honestly. That's a cooking pot. Because these days, if you drive years, around Accra yeah. and you see a pot like this, it's usually offered as a decorative pot, pot or a flower pot. Yes. But it's actually a cooking pot. This is a cooking pot. It's specially made. It doesn't leak. We have pots that are baked but if you put water in them they get wet soak and finally what's it made from clay clay yes it's a clay cooking pot it's a clay cooking pot handmade not like the ceramic way of making pot this everything is made just by hand and on the ground or on the floor okay. does this pot have any advantage over the aluminium uh, or metal pots that we a find lot, on the market a lot. what are some of them you know um with the aluminiums, you have some of the aluminium getting into your food or water. Oh, I know that's very bad. That causes cancer. A lot. It has a lot of side effects. Because you scrape it and, yes. you know, some of it If, if you don't even off. scrape it, the aluminium is aluminium. The cooking pots have their side effects. 
yes. But with the earthen pot, there's absolutely nothing that can give you any bacteria, any disease, or any cause of cancer. What about in terms of uh, how much fire or energy it uses? This can start can stand any amount of fire. You can put it on the gas, you can put it on firewood, you can put it on charcoal. You can even bake with it. Now this seems like knowledge that is either lost or disregarded. How did you start cooking uh, with traditional utensils? Well, I, I grew up with my grandmother. Fortunately, I had that opportunity and she was my best friend. I also had a, an opportunity of attending uh, this home science those days in the 70s this, today they call it what home economics but we did home science and putting all together and traveling abroad both home and abroad uh, I think I've traveled a lot within Africa the Americas UK Italy I've seen what is out there and I'm telling you that people are coming back to their roots. And that is eating healthy and staying healthy. Talking about uh, traveling all over the place, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. What, what, what is this? Metaphor? Well, this is a bamboo. And Super. this is my idea. Okay. This is a bamboo. Oh, it's that beautiful. I, yeah, I split it into two and then try to stitch it together. And this here, I can put my banku or yam, and I can put my sauce here. Oh, you mean it's a plate? It's a plate. It's for, for eating. It's for serving. Yes, you eat. But this is absolutely unique. I, I've never seen this. Have you tried eating from? Oh it yes, yourself? I love eating in it myself. And have others tried eating? Oh yes, I have friends who like eating in it. Oh, and, this is and, beautiful. And, I like and this. And unfortunately, most Ghanaians do not fancy this. But my expatriate friends. They are always amazed. Some order it, some buy some to take with them. Mm, yeah. I like your design ideas. I, ca I can't wait for you to share some of your recipes with me and with, with our viewers. I How will. long have you been doing this for? Oh, as long as I, I started growing up. My grandma was a, a grandma. traditional caterer. Caterer. Yes. So she only used traditional utensils? Oh, th those days, yes. Yes. For instance, this is if you enter somebody's hall, they use a big earthen pot for decoration. But in my grandmother's room, you can still see them. They are very large, and that's where she put her grains, her nuts, and you see them in sizes. The biggest, then the big, and it goes on. So when you enter, you know where to find, find beans, you know where to get rice, you know. And that's how she arranged her storeroom. What do you think accounts for the popularity of metal and uh, plastic ware in Ghana and ceramic ware these days? Well, I think they are cheap to me. In the first place, most of these metal and plastic are very cheap. And people do not want to go to the sources of these traditional things. Most people link these up with crudeness. You know, they enter your place and you have calabashes and pot in there. Like, what the hell is this woman doing with these things? And and I, I find it very, very, very interesting because that is where we come from. Yeah, anybody who knows where he or she is coming from knows from knows what he or she should eat and how she should eat right. Yeah. So these are the natural ways you can stay healthy and um, and you've decided to combine this with uh, vegan cuisine yes no meat and in Ghana if you say you don't eat meat people ask you if you are sick exactly somebody will tell you that I've made all this money I've suffered to make money why are you, you telling, telling me, me not, not to eat, eat meat meat or chicken or fish yes for instance, I always use this example. Let's talk about the elephant and the lion. Before you, before you continue with the elephant and the lion, I want to ask you this. Are you a vegetarian or a vegan yourself? No, I'm not. You're not? Yes. You just, you just uh, know about vegan cooking and vegan cuisine? Yes. I, I am a herbalist. I'm coming from a herbal background. Okay. So I know what it means 
to stay in vegetables or leaves. Where I come from, we eat almost every leaf. Interesting. Yes. And when, when I first heard about this Moringa Growers Association and everybody was jumping at it, I said, before I was born, Moringa was there. Why now? And people are abusing it. They don't even know how to use the Moringa properly. But Moringa is also a healthy, medicinal, and it serves as food. You can take morning, Moringa as your lunch or your snack. Well, some viewers uh, seem to agree with you, and I think, yes, I just, you know, skipped my mind. It says, uh, right, Gerald, Arthur, you're right, it says, Eric, when we were kids, we used to buy asana, and it was served from a calabash, which kept the coldness of the drink for several days. Now, indeed, I th well, I don't know if it's several days, but I do know that uh, the asana sellers, they yes, walk, the you know, in the sun, sun with a calabash. And, and it's still cold. And it's still cold, and all they have is a calabash. I always wondered how it stays cold. I yes. mean, uh, I've always wondered, and yeah. I, think, I think you're right. Uh, so that the blue says, I really love what the lady is bringing. We've got to go back to our olden days of life. People always have this problem with going back to our olden days of life. Everyone wants to move forward. Technology, improvement, advancement. But it seems like so many of these simple things are far more advanced than some of what we'd call modern. For example, the calabash keeping things cold. Is something that I'm really surprised about. In fact, I've seen it with the Asana sellers, but somehow it just didn't register. And even okay. when you said it, I was like, "Are you sure about this?" Yes, you so if uh, you know, if, if if Gerald hadn't given me that example, I would still be thinking, "Ah, you know, how can I try this?" But actually, I've seen it being used, and yet we buy coolers. Yes. For instance, I have a basket here, a calabash basket. Okay, a calabash basket. Yes. If you Let put your fruits. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yeah, if you put your fruits, I make this specially for my fruits and vegetables. If you put put fresh fruits and vegetables in a calabash, and you put some in a plastic basket or a metal container, okay, this stays longer. It preserves can, it, fruit. It, 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 it preserves the freshness, and you won't believe how long. Let me just look keep. at it again. Even your lettuce. If you put it here without a refrigerator, without a, refriger, a, a refrigerator for one week, as soon as you, you put it in cold it. water, no, you don't cover it. You just put the lettuce or the yes. fruits in the, in the calabash in the basket calabash, yes. and you find that it will store them. It will store them even though they look weak, but they are still healthy. As soon as you wash them, five, ten minutes, they are back to life. You've got lots of really nice things. I, 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 you are, we, Think of these things as art and craft, you know, yes. decorations these days. Well, we are making them go extinct, and that is not good enough. I just put that bit beside you. Okay, now this one I know about. This this is a small calabash. calabash yes. This is what you know they sell uh, asana, asana and pito yes. and sometimes hausa hausa cocoa, cocoa, cocoa yes. in it, and that's all we ever use it for. And it's hardly ever used in homes. Why? Well, when you go up north, it's mostly used at homes, yes, even on the market. A shea butter, traditional shea butter producer and seller will measure her price with a calabash. Gosh. Yeah, we have them in sizes. Yes. So they are used everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think this answers Kwame Abu's question. It says, please ask your guest for me if she uses all these things in her own house. If so, then I wish to spend a week with her and the family because I love this. And this is uh, someone writing from UDS or campus, Kwame Abu. Okay. Do you use uh, only traditional utensils in your home? Yes. Even in my restaurant, if you come to the Accra Sports Stadium, I have a restaurant. People enter and they are amazed. And these are all that I use. I love this. Okay, wh what is this, Aisha? That's a bamboo stand. A stand? Yes. For what? To hold your calabash of drink. Oh, okay. So so you put this uh, on the on table. It. If it's on the table, you put oh, it so, on. Oh, so it's better balanced? Yes. Okay, cool. Because I was wondering, you know, what will happen if this, uh, if this tips yeah, over. Yeah, just put it on the, the bamboo stand. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I, I, wa I wonder what it would take for us to really start trying these things. And I, and I see that you've got a really big, thick calabash yes. uh, just in front of the, of the table. What's that for? That one too is for the same purpose. But for instance, if you are making a buffet of food, yeah, you can put some of your food in the big one with a nice stand. And like a stand like this, you just 
sit your big calabash on it. And if it's your rice, your gari photo, or whatever, you just heap it. And it, it looks nicer and more natural and beautiful. Fantastic. Traditional, traditional cooking, uh, starting from utensils. Yeah. These are ladles. We have them in different shapes, different. This is also a plate. That's a plate? Yes. Wait, that, and, and, and that doesn't look like a plate to me. That looks more a like a, a little tray. Okay. But so I'm sure it will be a lot of fun. You can put, yeah, you can put your food, your, your rice and your sauce. Or you fill it with the rice and the sauce in the middle. And you can also put your... Wooden uh, plates. Yes, wooden plates. I like that. You know, the wooden plates, they wouldn't break. Yeah. If you come to my <laughs> restaurant, I'll serve you in this. <laughs> you would? Yes. You, you, you actually use this all the time in your restaurant? Yes, not all the time. There are people who insist. Mm -hmm. Now I have customers who enter and they tell me, I like to take my drink in a calabash. Or I like to have it in a glass. And I have the range of all. Yeah. Aisha, thank you very much uh, for welcome. sharing your time and uh, some of your amazing utensils. This, this is also uh, clay and that's a frying pan. This is a clay frying pan? Yes. Oh, I said, come on, that, how could this be a frying pan? <laughs> you can fry anything in it. You can fry your egg in this it. This looks like something from the art center. Exactly, and people do not know that these can be used, or these were used for these purposes. A clay frying pan? Yes, you can fry your meat in it. You can fry your kose in it. And I suppose that it would not burn, huh? No, it doesn't stick. It doesn't and it stick. Doesn't, uh, if, it, if it's burning, maybe your fire is too... They but nothing would stick to it. No, 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 no. As soon as you put your oil in and you throw your kose in, it floats. Or whatever. It doesn't stick. It's a non-stick. Natural non-stick. Natural non-stick. Yes. The one that sells then for hundreds of Ghana CDs exactly, in expensive shops. Exactly. This is the original. Every, every pot is a non-stick. All your pots here are non-stick. Yes. You put them on yes. the fire. Yes. They cook as well as the metal ones. They don't stick. Exactly. And they don't harm your health. They don't harm your health health especially those you you make for frying what you always do is you always rub them with your oil if it's shea butter if it's peanut oil whatever oil they are always oiled and they don't stick like this fantastic i really enjoyed our conversation i'm glad that we met and i want to thank uh, dr sharita Yazid for making this introduction i've been asking you know for traditional uh, traditional traditional methods traditional foods traditional ingredients traditional utensils well i didn't ask for this but i'm amazed i never thought that i would uh, be looking at a frying pan made out of clay that mm. has all the properties of the latest and most expensive ones i can't wait to try this and to taste the food that's made in traditional utensils such as the one that i'm holding what's the what, what's the traditional name for this for this uh, clay frying pan oh we call them this one is la you just call it la la <laughs> la that is a bowl a bowl yes. okay the difference is what you used to fry or what you used to cook lovely